I'm going to go ahead and call it now. Uh, Tesla's NACS connector has one, and uh, the CCS1 connector is about to be a thing of the past here in North America. Now that GM has joined Ford with plans to install Tesla's NACS ports in their vehicles starting in 2025, and with a number of EV charging companies also announcing plans to support NACS, there really is now so much momentum that other auto manufacturers can't ignore it. So I believe NACS has won. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. A few days ago, General Motors officially announced that their EVs would gain access to Tesla superchargers in early 2024, requiring the use of an adapter at first, and then starting in 2025, they plan to begin adding the actual NACS charging port to GM EVs. As I talked about in a past video on May 25th, Ford made a similar announcement that they also plan to add the NACS Tesla connector in 2025, and Ford EVs will gain access to Tesla's network in the spring of 2024. In addition to GM and Ford, of course, as I talked about in a past video, Aptera also plans to use the NACS connector and charging standard for their vehicle. And um, Electrek recently reported on June 12th that additionally, seven EV charging companies have also announced plans to support the NACS charging connector as well. The companies listed in this Electrek article include ABB, Blink, ChargePoint, EVGo, Flow, Tritium, and Wallbox. Now, as a brief reminder, you've probably seen a lot of things on this, but in case you're watching this and you don't know this, Tesla's NACS connector really is far superior to the CCS1 connector that is really the standard for non-Tesla EVs here in North America. Back in November of 2022, Tesla announced a new name for their charger connector, and they called it the North American Charging Standard, and also announced... Um, their intent to really make this the standard for North America and replace CCS1. And Tesla also made a clear case of why the NACS connector was better than the CCS1 connector by saying, quote, with more than a decade of use and 20 billion EV charging miles to its name, the Tesla charging connector is the most proven in North America, offering AC charging and up to one megawatt DC charging in one slim package. It has no moving parts, is half the size and twice as powerful as combined charging system CCS connectors. In this Tesla blog post, they also showed this image here, which demonstrates the difference, the size difference between Tesla's NACS connector versus a CCS connector. And the size difference is very substantial. And it's much easier to use the NACS connector when it comes to charging a vehicle. It's not quite as clunky and it's definitely superior. In addition, as Tesla made clear in this blog post, um, NACS equipped vehicles, meaning at this point, Tesla's vehicles, far outnumber in North America non-Tesla vehicles, meaning non-NACS um, equipped vehicles. So NACS really already has the majority. Now, when it comes to an exact percentage, according to data from Cox Automotive, in the United States in 2022, Tesla sold over 522,000 battery electric vehicles, and that represented roughly a and that represented over a 64% market share according to the total market numbers that Cox Automotive listed. Ford held that second spot at around 7.6% market share, and GM held the third spot at around 4.83% market share. If you use 2022 numbers as an example of what this could look like in the future, and this could change a bit, but as of right now, that represents nearly 77% of the battery electric vehicle market in North America being on board with the NACS connector. So the other top companies like Kia, Hyundai, and VW, they really can't ignore this anymore. And it would be very advantageous for them to also make plans to add the NACS connector to their vehicles in the future as well. Now, if I'm correct and CCS1 begins to be phased out, it of course will take some time. It's not just gonna happen overnight. But I strongly believe that, say, by the time we get to um, 2026 or so, I believe that we'll see a very strong move away from CCS1 here in North America. And if I am correct, then we should expect quite a few more announcements about adding NACS 
uh, two vehicles in the coming uh, months and in the coming year or so. Despite this, though, a phase out of CCS1 in the United States doesn't seem to be something that the current White House administration is ready for. According to this Reuters article, which was published on June 9th, quote, the White House on Friday said electric vehicle charging stations using Tesla standard plugs would be eligible for billions of dollars in federal subsidies as long as they included the U.S. charging standard connection, CCS, as well. Now, I do understand where the White House administration is coming from right now. Um, there are a lot of CCS vehicles on the road in North America, not the majority, but there still are quite a few electric vehicles with the CCS1 connector, and it's good to support those. However, um, how long do we want to support those? And is it really important that a charging connector have that long term? Now, Tesla has come up with a great solution with their magic dock. That really is kind of the in-between, and it's very possible that Tesla will include that for quite some time in their superchargers. But ultimately, I would like to see those go away and for NACS to be the standard overall. I think we're almost there. And uh, if any more companies like VW, Kia, Hyundai, etc. jump on board, I feel like that it's a 100% thing that, that CCS is going to have to go away here in North America because really NACS is just getting too much momentum. At the end of the day, I don't believe this White House policy will um, really keep CCS1 around for much longer because when you look at the NACS connector versus the CCS1 connector as a manufacturer in North America, I mean, it's actually beneficial to have the NACS connector in your vehicle for several reasons. Scott Hoffman, who is the program manager at Monroe Associates, um, spoke about uh, CCS1 versus NACS in a video that was published on the Monroe Live YouTube channel in the past. And according to Scott, uh, the NACS charge port is more space efficient, lighter, and less costly to manufacturers than the CCS1 connector. So just those reasons alone would be enough for a manufacturer to want to install an NACS connector instead of a CCS connector. But in addition to that, Tesla has the best charging network as well that currently has NACS connectors at those stations. So when manufacturers have this, they're giving their customers access to the best charging network as well, which means that more customers will likely be comfortable buying a Ford or GM EV that may not have been in the past because they know that they can have a reliable charging experience when they buy that vehicle. In addition, when it comes to the customer's end, when you look at the size difference of Tesla's NACS connector versus the CCS connector, it's much easier to use the NACS connector and it's gonna be a much better customer experience as EVs really start to take over the market. In a lot of ways, when you look at these charge port differences, it reminds me a lot of the difference between USB-A and USB-C when it comes to computers. So it's obvious that USB-C is better and companies aren't going to stick with this. They're phasing it out versus this because this is far superior. And I believe it's going to be the same thing with Tesla's NACS connector auto manufacturers are going to go with a better product and Ford and GM are really just the beginning of this. Now, when it comes to how this benefits Tesla as a company, um, if you've been around Tesla for any period of time, you know that the goal for Tesla is to accelerate the transition to sustainable energy and to sustainable transportation. So this obviously fits within that goal. But in addition to that, Tesla should get quite a bit of revenue from other uh, companies using their charging network as well. For example, according to this recent Reuters article, which was published on June 9th, Wedbush Securities estimates that when you look at revenue that Tesla could get from Ford and GM in the next few years um, using their charging network, they estimate that it could add up to somewhere around $3 billion of revenue for Tesla once again over the next few years. In addition, Tesla is able to build out their charging network um, at a much lower cost than what other companies require to build out a charging network. And this became obvious when Tesla applied for a program in Texas that was incentivizing EV chargers. And as Electric reported back in April of 2022, very likely at that time it cost Tesla roughly $43,000 per charger versus over $200,000 for the competition. This is a huge win, especially when taxpayer dollars are involved. And these subsidies are of course financed by taxpayers here in the United States. So. When the U.S. government offers a subsidy to a company for installing charging stations, 
A company that can do it more efficiently is definitely the company I want doing that. And since Tesla is the most efficient and they've proven that their stations are extremely reliable, this is a huge win for everyone, for non-Tesla EV drivers, um, for taxpayers here in America, and really just for electric vehicles in general and the adoption of them. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also, once again, I'd like to thank all of those of you who support me on Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link to that in the video description. Thank you so much.